Good morning, good morning. Today is uh, Monday, August 2nd. We have uh, the book Haggai, chapters 1 and 2, and Psalm 59, and we have a video to start us off. So let's take a deep breath, and we'll uh, ask the Lord's blessing on this time. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for being our God, for loving us, for being so amazing and so incredible, Lord. We just ask that you would bless us right now as we read your word, give us wisdom and understanding, fill us with your spirit. Lord, be with Michaela's grandmother right now in the hospital. Lord, we just lift her up to you. We just ask that you would work a miracle in her life, that you would uh, restore her uh, breathing, heal her body, Lord. Be with us now as we dig into your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Haggai challenges Israel after the exile to remain faithful to their God and rebuild the temple. If they disobey, they risk losing their role in the fulfillment of God's promises to bring the Messianic kingdom. Okay, let's watch this video. The book of the prophet Haggai. It's one of the smaller prophetic books, but crucially important in the overall story of the Hebrew Bible. So for centuries, the Hebrew prophets had been accusing Israel of breaking their covenant with God through idolatry and injustice, and they warned that God would send the great empire of Babylon to take out Jerusalem, destroy the temple, and haul off the people into exile. And it all happened in the year 587 BC. But that wasn't the end of the story. The prophets also believed that there was still hope and that God would one day bring back a transformed remnant of his people Israel to live in a new Jerusalem where God's presence would live in their midst. Now when we turn to Haggai, the year is 520 BC, nearly 70 years after the exile. And the Babylonian Empire has recently collapsed and the world is now ruled by the Persians. Now they allowed the return of any exiled Israelites who wanted to go back to Jerusalem which still lay in ruins. And so under the leadership of a high priest named Joshua and Zerubbabel, an heir from the line of David, and a group of exiles, they all returned and began to rebuild the city and their lives. Remember the story from the book of Ezra chapters 1 to 6. So our hopes are high and the future seems very bright, but it's not actually, at least from Haggai's point of view. The book consists of four sections that summarize Haggai's message given to the people of Jerusalem over the course of four months. He opens by accusing the people of misplaced priorities. And so yes, they have come back to Jerusalem, but they're spending all of their time and resources rebuilding their own fancy houses, while the temple still lay in ruins from its destruction from 70 years ago. So Haggai asks, are your own houses really more important than your allegiance to God? This neglect, Haggai says, is tantamount to the covenant rebellion of their ancestors, which is why the land is still unproductive, why they've been struck with famine and drought. And here Haggai's quoting from the list of covenant curses in the book of Deuteronomy. And so Haggai's challenging words, they're followed by a story of the people's response. Remember also the story in Ezra chapter 5. We're told that Zerubbabel, Joshua, the remnant of the people were provoked by Haggai's message and they were motivated. They started rebuilding the temple. So in the next section, Haggai follows up one month later and he addresses some problems of shattered expectations among the people. So the temple that they're rebuilding is really pretty unimpressive. It's nothing compared to the glory of the temple Solomon built here some 500 years earlier. And so morale was really low for finishing the project. And so Haggai reminds the people of the great prophetic promises of the future kingdom of God and about this temple. He draws from the earlier prophets, especially Isaiah and Micah, about the new Jerusalem and that it would be the place from which God would redeem the whole world and where all nations would come and participate in God's kingdom resulting in an era of peace. And so the temple, it plays a key role in God's plans for the future. And Haggai calls on the people to work in hope despite the disappointing circumstances. In the third section, Haggai follows up two months later with a call to covenant faithfulness. And he engages some priests in a conversation about ritual purity. Remember all the key ideas from the book of Leviticus. So he says, if someone goes and touches a dead body and becomes ritually impure or marked by death, and then they go and touch some food, is that food impure too? And the priests, knowing the book of Leviticus, say, yes, it's impure. And then Haggai turns this into a parable. He says, this is how it is with the people of Israel and what they're putting their hands to in rebuilding the temple. If the current generation doesn't humble themselves, if they don't turn from injustice and apathy, then Haggai says whatever they build with their hands, including this new temple, will be impure too. 
Haggai's challenge is that it's only by true repentance and covenant faithfulness that their building efforts will result in God bringing his kingdom and blessing. And so, in a sense, Israel's future lay in their hands. God's waiting for his people to be faithful. And so the choice that Haggai is laying before the exiled generation, it's very similar to the challenge Moses gave the wilderness generation before entering the land. Their obedience will lead to blessing and success, while faithlessness will lead to ruin. The book concludes with Haggai's summary of the future hope of God's kingdom. He's going to make the new Jerusalem the center of his glorious international kingdom. And from there he will confront and defeat evil among the nations. He reminds people of the defeat of Pharaoh's army in the Exodus story. God will fulfill here his promise to David and establish the king from his line. And in Haggai's day that was represented by Zerubbabel. And so the book ends with the choice of a bright future just hanging there. So the question is, will Haggai's generation be faithful to God? Will they experience the fulfillment of all these promises? And Zerubbabel, will he be faithful? Will he turn out to be the messianic king? And you have to just keep reading into the final two books of the prophets, Zechariah and Malachi, to find out. But you can see how this little book contains a great challenge to every generation of God's people, that our choices really matter and that the faithfulness and obedience of God's people is part of how God has chosen to work out his purposes in the world. And so this surprising truth should motivate humility and action in God's people as they look forward to God's coming kingdom. And that is the message of the book of Haggai. Okay, <clears throat> let's get into Haggai chapter 1, the command to rebuild the temple. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Thus says the Lord of hosts, These people say the time is not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet, It is time for you yourselves to dwell in Is it time is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns a wage does, does so to put them into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the hills and bring wood and build the house that I may take pleasure in it and that I may be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much and behold, it came to little. And when you brought it home, it blew away. Why, declares the Lord of hosts, because of my house that lies in ruins. Why, each of you busies himself with his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you have withheld the dew, and the earth has withheld its produce, and I have called for a drought on the land and on the hills, on the grain, on the new wine, the oil, on, the, on what the ground brings forth, on man and beast, and all their labors. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai the messenger of the Lord spoke to the people with the Lord's message, I am with you, declares the Lord, and the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the the high priest and the spirit of all the remnant of the people and they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts their God on the 24th day of the month and the sixth month in the second year of Darius the king chapter 2 in the seventh month on the 21st day of the month the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet speak now to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel governor of Judah and say to Joshua the son of Jehozadak the high priest and to all the remnant of the people and say who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory how do you see it now is it not as nothing in your eyes yet now be strong O Zerubbabel declares the Lord be strong O Joshua son of Jehozadak the high priest be strong all you people of the land declares the Lord work for I am with you declares the Lord of hosts according to the covenant that I made with you when you came out of Egypt my spirit remains in your midst 
Fear not, for thus says the Lord of hosts, Yet once more, in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, so that the treasures of all the nations shall come in, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house shall be great. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. On the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet. Thus says the Lord of hosts, ask the priests about the law. If someone carries own holy meat in the fold of his garment and touches his fold bread or stew or wine or oil or any kind of food, does it become holy? The priest answered and said, no. Then Haggai said, if someone who is unclean by contact with a dead body touches any of these, does he become unclean? The priest answered and says, it does become unclean. Then Haggai answered and said, so it is with this people and with this nation before me, declares the Lord. And so with every work of their hands, what they offer, there is what, and what they offer Offer there is unclean. Now then, consider from this day onward, before stone was placed upon stone in the temple of the Lord, and how did you fare? When one came to a heap of twenty measures, there was but ten, and when one came to a wine vat and drew fifty measures, there was but twenty. I struck you and all your products of your toil with blight and with mildew and with hail, yet you did not turn to me, declares the Lord. Consider from this day onward, from the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, since the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider, it is the seed... Is the seed yet in the barn? Indeed, the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have yielded nothing. But from this day on, I will bless you. The word of the Lord came a second time to Haggai on the 24th day of the month. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I am about to shake the heavens and the earth and to overflow the throne of kingdoms. I'm about to destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations and overthrow the chariots and their riders and the horses and their riders shall go down every one by the sword of his brother on that day, declares the Lord of hosts. I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, declares the Lord, and make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts. Okay, let's move into a time of prayer and meditate on Psalm 59. It's titled, Deliver Me From My Enemies as to the Choir Master, According to Do Not Destroy, a Mictam of David, when Saul sent men to watch his house in order to kill him. <clears throat> Deliver me from my enemies, O oh my God. Protect me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from those who work evil. And save me from bloodthirsty men. For behold, they lie in wait for my life. Fierce men stir up strife against me. For no transgression or sin of mine, O Lord, for no fault of mine, they run and make ready. Awake, come to meet me and see. You, Lord of hosts, are God of Israel. Rouse yourself to punish all the nations. Spare none of those who treacherously plot evil. Selah. Each evening they come back howling like dogs and prowling about the city. There they are, bellowing with their mouths, with swords in their lips, for who, they think, will hear us. But you, O oh Lord, laugh at them. You hold all the nations in derision. O oh, my strength, I will watch for you. For you, O oh God, are my fortress. My God in his steadfast love will meet me. God will let me look in triumph on my enemies. Kill them not lest my people forget. Make them totter by your power and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouths, the words of their lips, let them be trampled in their pride. For the cursing and the lies that they utter, consume them in wrath, consume them till they are no more, that they may know that God rules over Jacob to the ends of the earth. Selah. Each evening they come back. Howling like dogs and prowling about the city, they wander about for food and growl if they do not get their fill. But I will sing of your strength. 
I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning, for you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in the day of my distress. O oh, my strength, I will sing praises to you, for you, O oh God, are my fortress, the God of who shows me steadfast love. O oh, Heavenly Father, we so are so thankful that you are our strength that your, your steadfast love is about us, Lord, that you are our fortress, our refuge, our strength. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that you are these things, that these are your attributes, that you are so incredible, that you love us so much. Lord, we're so unworthy to even speak to you, Lord. But you allow us, Lord. You invite us. Like a loving father still willing to listen to his rebel rebellious children, Lord. We're so thankful for you and for your love for us, Lord. Lord, we just ask right now that you would be with Michaela's grandmother, Lord. Uh, she's in the hospital, and it's just not looking good, Lord, with COVID and uh, pneumonia, Lord. We just ask that you would, uh, Michaela asks that you would just clear up her lungs, Lord, that you would uh, restore her life, Lord. And Lord, we just... That's our prayer, Lord. And Lord, we know your will, ultimately. We know you're going to do the right thing. You always do the right thing, Lord, and we can trust in that. We can have peace and rest that you always do the right thing in every situation, Lord. We're so thankful for that. Lord, we just ask that you be with, again, with Michaela's grandmother in the hospital right now, that you would heal her body, Lord, that you would restore her health. Lord, I think of Trish and Pam and those suffering, that you would lift them up, Lord, that you would restore their health. Father, we just ask that you be with those that are suffering, with those that don't know you, Lord, that you would draw people to yourselves, Lord. Lord, be with the church as the children's ministry is getting started, Lord, that it would just be a, a blessing and effective and just a blessing to our fellowship, a blessing to the neighborhood there, Lord, that you would work in and through us, Lord, to bring people into your kingdom. We thank you, Lord. We love you. Just, just ask for your blessing upon this day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.